Um, Jessica has been asking me questions. She figured some stuff out on her own. That's kind of what, what this is meant to do. You know, this week, I have had people writing to me that I haven't heard from for a while. You know, I got that Facebook page for the hooves, and there's a, a messenger thing in it. And so there was a lot of people that I worked with on the messenger before I started the class. And one of the reasons why I started the class was I just could not tell everybody the same thing. You know, it'd be like teaching, taking time to teach each one of you all these eight sessions individually. That's kind of what I was doing with people. It's pretty neat because in the past couple of weeks, I've had people get back with me that they just dropped off the radar. And they haven't even had this class, and they did have some semi-mapping instructions, and they were using some of the videos, you know, that I'd already posted. But they're coming back, and what I'm finding is that, uh, and this is the goal of this, they're becoming independent, they're becoming empowered, and they're able to help their own horses. That is the goal of this to empower people to be able to take care of their own horses and and start getting things right that's not to say we shouldn't get together we need to get together we need to band together and our research and and figure out always better ways and better things and improve the whole time and change where we need to but i what i really want this class to do is i want it to empower you I want you to be independent. I want you to be knowledgeable and be able to see the feet, to know what's going on, and to be empowered and independent. So that is the goal. All these steps I learned over a long period of time of correcting things. And it is all about the internal anatomy and the external structure of the hoof capsule. I learned all these steps that you find in the mapping, even the picture taking, a little bit at a time, here and there, correcting. And then after I discovered the deal about the heel buttress, one, and I was doing the video where one of my first heel buttress videos where I trim this foot and stuff, a cadaver foot. I got to thinking, you know what, I'm just going to write down everything that I have learned, every step that I have had to take that has helped me try and figure out where that internal foot is so that when I'm trimming, I can get that hoof capsule into alignment and into the right spot on that inner foot. I started writing down those things. I wrote it down as a system that I would apply. Then I took that writing and I did it myself. All the things I had applied, but I was not applying them in line. Well, when I wrote that down and I started applying them, I'm telling you, that thing took on a life of its own. And it began to teach me, which was really strange. It is. It's like this has a life of its own. I think because it is so based on the truth that as you apply this anatomical mapping they do it in brain surgery. They do it in medicine. They do it in plastic surgery. It's anatomical mapping. This is not just a cookie cutter, da, 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 da. You know the internal foot. You have a general idea of how things should be, where things should be, and it helps you keep everything in alignment. It teaches you kind of how to have x-ray vision. And then once you really get to know it, you don't have to use it all the time, but it's always there to back you up and to keep you in alignment. The thing that's hard is to keep the, to rasp the toe straight to where the toe is actually in the center of the foot because the horse's foot, as you know, crocks to the side. Well, your eyes want to make things straight. So even though your horse's foot naturally, when you pick it up, kind of kinks over to the side, your eyes are wanting to make it straight. And so you wind up trimming the center of the toe over to the side instead of to the center of the frog apex. So that's why, you know, I started using protractor because my eyes, I don't want somebody building my house and just eyeballing it. You know what I mean? How much more my horse's foot, you know, a living, breathing, you know, anatomical part. Um, I think you could get better at eyeballing things, but the mapping will help help you understand the anatomy 
and keep some boundaries, some general boundaries to keep from things from getting out of control. Yes, what does Rufus say? Mapping helps me negotiate the internal structures. The central line is just so important with the protractor. Oh, yeah, hey, Jessica, I'm finally getting to you here. Jessica says, hi, Linda. I've gathered some questions along the way. Jessica is awesome about asking questions and detailing it. You see how talented people are. Everybody here has a special talent and this special thing to give. And if we can get it organized, we're going to change hoof care. But no one person can do it alone. All right. Hi, Linda. I've gathered some questions along the way. Mapping the bars, bar line. I got a bit confused today when I was mapping the hooves. I suddenly wasn't sure on how to draw the bar line. And I think I drew them too low at first close to and too close to the collateral groove. Yeah, you can do that. From the dots on either side of the true apex of the frog, you draw a line to the highest point inside the heel buttress or to one inch heel buttress, depending on the heel height. I am, am I right? Well, what I think at this time, you know, that you're restoring heels and that bar, it's a little lower. Let me show you something here in pictures about the shape of the wall. I just put this clay around this coffin bone so I could see what it's shaped like. You see, this is the shape of the coffin bone. This is really the shape of, the, of this. This is a back foot, so it's a little more pointy here. But you see how the wall goes and ends? Okay, this is technically your bar here. Let's say this is your heel right here, and this is your bar. You see how your bar goes down to nothing? You see how it's just a little lower than the heel would be as it comes around that corner? Because your heels are not correct, it's going to be kind of difficult to make perfect a perfect bar line right there with heels that you're trying to restore. So here's your heels. These heels are not correct yet. Not totally correct, but look at, at, at the frog stay here. Okay, now next week I'm going to show you some more pictures of frog stays and how they're just decimated. Now my heels are run forward pretty bad because I missed an opportunity to keep them back like I should have. But you know what? That's just another opportunity for me to learn. Okay, so you see the bar here, how it it's not the same height as the heel, but the heel is also longer than it's supposed to be right here. But I didn't want to trim it down because I want it bearing weight so it will push up into here and keep pushing the back of the foot up for now. In this case, I mapped my heels after I mapped the bars. See, there's my heel line and my bar line is just right below that. So that would make it, you know how I showed you the clay, how the clay gets simulated hoof wall. It comes around around here and it gets less and less just like when you're looking at the foot from the side okay okay just like you're looking at the foot look how it gets less longer here shorter here right gets shorter even as it goes around the heel and by the time it gets into the bar here it's shorter yet you don't want your bars bearing weight either. They're, they're weak and they'll just lay over and they'll lay over in the seat of the corn right here and lay over the sole and choke it out. So this, all this is, is to keep a boundary for your bars and it takes some time to learn how to trim them straight because if they're higher in one point, it'll make them look crooked. Yeah, I, th I think bars are passive to weight bearing. They are there to support the sole right in here support the sole and then they connect to the heel buttress and then they connect to the back of the coffin bone as a support wall that goes right here so they're, they're twofold one to keep the shape of the sole two to connect the buttress to the back of the coffin bone right there so that it stabilizes and supports the buttress as well see how I'm going right to that mark or just below it because one very important thing, okay, is to clean this area out here. 
you got to really pay attention to this area of the bar right here because that can overgrow and it can hold your heels forward. Do you see how that bar would hold that heel forward? So you have got to really clean up. You've got to really come around here and really clean up right there and keep this moving. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes you even have to take a little bit of wall up in here. Yeah, so that all this is open right here. Okay, Jessica, did that kind of help that question at all? If, if, do you have another question about that? Find your questions. There they are. Stretched white line and bevel. How do you bevel if you have a stretched white line? Do you bevel with a 45-degree angle to the white line, or do you bevel with a 45-degree angle through the white line? Well, you would want to bevel. I think you bevel through that stretched white line back to back to the sole because you don't want any leverage on that stretched white line you would just go all the way back to the white line it's no different than when you are doing a long toe you measure that toe and then you draw that line and you go all the way back okay see right there how i'm coming through the white line back to the toe right there now this is the one where his foot changed a little bit. The frog apex moved back. Because remember that whole frog's moving back, right? So the frog apex is going to change. So you've got to cut that apex down. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you've got to trim it down. You can't let excess apex get in your way, okay? from correcting your frog. All right. Okay, see where I would have come right there. You know, because it's been a while since he's been trimmed, so he is a little bit stretched right there. Okay. Does that answer your question on that? Because you wouldn't want any leverage on a stretched white line, would you? And look, if you've got a really stretched white line and the foot is really setting on the ground, you remember how I showed you you pick up a glass? When you hold a glass tight, it picks it up off the ground. Same thing with your foot here, the sole of your foot. But when you relax your hand, the glass falls to the tabletop. Same thing with the wall. When you have a nice tight wall, it picks the foot up. But when it's real loose and you got a lot of flaring, it sets that foot down on the ground. So your horse might need support in casts or something, you know. Technically, once we get them walls a little bit tighter, and we are not going to need casts. Okay, so Jessica, did that answer your question on that? I want to finish reading your question, though. She said, my horse Elvis has stretched white lines on all four, but the worst is on the back hooves. He also has white line separation, which makes the beveling more difficult. Yeah, I can, uh, I can really understand that. So I think you said and something later you started to understand why you need to alternate that. And... When we look at your horse's foot, we're going to see some interesting things. He's got long toes, and they need to come back. And he's also got flare, so I need to bevel, but perhaps I should do it differently. I feel like there should be some improvement to the toes, toe length, and flare of the hooves. I check the hooves every week and do not touch up the bevel and, and do touch up the bevel and the hoof wall, but the process is slow. Okay, I'm going to show you on your foot why the process is slow. And you're, there's no getting around it because you have to grow out a whole new hoof wall. And that's what you're doing. You're growing down a whole brand new connected hoof wall. So, yeah, the process is slow. And we'll look at that on your horse. In fact, I think I have him right here. Does that look familiar, Jessica? <laughs> yes something you know well you know how we all just so know our horse's feet like the back of our hand i want you to see something here you're not looking for results here you're looking for results here now look at the difference in the quality of the hoof wall that is growing down this hoof wall here is never going to change it's got to grow down out and off the foot Look at there. Look at the difference. 
See, you think you aren't getting results, but you're not looking in the right spot. You got to look up here. You're growing this hoof wall down. You've got to grow a whole new foot. And sometimes you're going to have to grow a whole new foot a couple of times. Let's look at some more here. See, you're growing the toe down. You're, you know, the only reason you're trimming the toe back is to get all the leverage off the wall so it'll get the pressure off the coronary band. And so this wall will grow down straight and connected and the whole hoof wall will be of that quality. You've got a little bit of sole ridge in there, but this doesn't really matter. What matters is what is this hoof wall growing down? It's going to bring this toe back. It's going to bring the sole under the foot the way it's supposed to be. You're going to see that the apex of the frog is going to move. See there? Look at that. Let's look at this foot. See your flaring here? Okay, what you want to do is you want to grow this wall down like this. Grow this wall down down tight. So that's why you have to do the beveling and all that. It keeps just enough leverage off the wall that you can grow this whole wall down tightly connected and it's going to pick up that inner foot and support that sole ridge and that sole corium. You don't see it as well in dark hooves, but can you see the difference in the quality of hoof wall up here? See that? Look at here. Look at the ridges. Um, this way you need to do an alternating bevel, maybe on the pillars. Leave the toe and the quarter once and just do a little bit of maybe an alternating bevel right here. See, this is from loose lamina. This is a compression ring right here. From the lamina is loose and it's flared and so there's no real good connection. And so that hoof wall compresses to try and help the horse out. Do you understand that concept, why it would do that? See, not too bad. You got a little bit of sole ridge there, but you're going to have a lot more because this whole wall has to come back. See there, don't be afraid to take the toe back. Okay, don't be afraid to find the apex of the frog. You're not going to hurt that horse. You know, you get in there gently and you just start finding where the frog and the apex, the true apex and the sole meet. Fresh frog. You know, here's the thing about frog. It gets old and petrified because your horses don't get enough movement. And then it gets like a hard callus that cracks and is unhealthy. And then it gets so that it doesn't have buoyancy. Frog material is very buoyant, you know, like like a Goodyear rubber tire. You ever seen tires with tire rot, how the rubber just hardens and is no good anymore and cracks? That's not what you want for your frogs, but that is what can happen to your frogs. Let's look here. Let's look at a few sole shots. Okay, you see... You know, you haven't got any heels, so you're growing heel. This this the back foot. Yes, it is. There is his face. Okay, it takes longer to do the back feet. It really does. You see how this is periopal? You see how this needs to be frog instead of periopal? See, that's what we're doing, pulling these frogs right up back and restoring them. You see how weak the bars are? But the foot will change as you follow the mapping. Jessica, have you had been able to really go in there and trim down and really find where that sole and apex of the frog meet? Okay, well, you have to do it every time because as the foot is growing heel and pushing up the bulb, it's pulling this whole frog back into position. So that apex is going to change. It's going to move back like that. You can find more apex there. You can take out a little bit of that sole and just trim that down a little more and find where that's at. Now, see if I had a picture. Okay, I don't have any good pictures of the, the lateral and the medial. So you need to work on that, on getting low to the ground and a profile of the total side of the foot. Okay, then I can tell more about your toe and how long your toe is and how much lamina you got stretched. And, where your true apex of your frog should be, you need to get down a little lower if you can, clear down to the ground 
on the side views as well, a little better side views. I would need to really see that correctly. See, I would come down here and I would find the true apex of the frog. Which, that's another thing, one of these things I'm going to teach you here one of these days is another way to determine where the true apex of the frog, it's general, okay, but it's just another way you can do that. Another way you can do is find the center of the hoof and measure three-fourths inch forward. And there is where your true apex of the frog should be. And then finally, Jessica says this says, I'm feeling okay with my trimming, but I want to do and feel more than okay. I want to become real good at this because I think this is great and I love working with hooves. I haven't been alternating the beveling. I have been concentrating on beveling the toe and pillars to the white line. But after the last webinar, I see why I should alternate. So by the next trim, I'm going to do just that and do a stronger bevel in the quarters, at least in the front. His back hooves have a larger white line separation, and I find it difficult then to make a bevel to the white line because that will leave him standing on sole. This is why you might want to do a strong bevel to the white line and cast the back feet for a couple weeks. Or just take it slow. There's no getting around it. When the feet aren't right, they're not right, and there's no way we're going to trim them right. We're growing them right. But perhaps that won't be a problem for him as long as the hoof has support from the hoof wall and the toe and pillars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, that's what I think. I mean, if I bevel to the water line in the toe and the pillars and to the white line in the quarters, that should leave him good support, right? Well, that's what I hope. I hope that that leaves support so that you can still keep the foot remodeling and growing correctly while giving the horse some support. I think he's doing fine. His heels and his buttress are growing. I can see that. He's not as sore as he was before. Hey, that's wonderful. My concerns are his back hooves because the heels are so very low and the white line separation is a problem. I can see the shift in the angle of the hoof wall. Perhaps this must grow down before the white line will get tight again. Yes, it has to grow down. See how you're figuring it out? If you just have a foundation set in the anatomy, your brain will start figuring things out. That's what I want this trim to do and this teaching to do, is work with you and help you figure it out. But they seem to be growing more slow in the back hooves, and maybe that's just how it seems. No, it's not how it seems. It's true. <laughs> okay, everybody... Uh, they grow, they seem to crack slower in the back. A few days ago, I noticed vertical cracks in the dorsal wall with the toe and the front of the right hoof cracks that seemed to go a bit deep. I was afraid that they would get worse, so I did a perimeter rasp on both front hooves to prevent more cracks. This made hooves look a great deal shorter. I will update with pics. Okay, and you're going to get cracks as the hoof shifts. I got strange cracks too, but they never went in far. Um, it's just that the hoof wall was changing and shifting and that new hoof wall growing down. Okay, so uh, Jessica, do you have any more questions for right now? 